This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. It's Monday, May 4th, and this is your Barbados Today morning update. So glad you can join us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Our top story, Barbados continues to enjoy bumper arrivals. So reports Tourism Minister Richard Seeley, who says after an outstanding winter season, arrivals to the island remain stronger than ever. In fact, Minister Seeley revealed that all hotel rooms on the island are currently occupied, a feat he attributes to the work being done by teams in the United Kingdom, the United States and Canada. He said visitor arrivals were up 27% out of the U.S. and 6% out of the United Kingdom as of April. Those figures, Minister Seely said, did not include the thousands of British visitors who were in the country for the third test match at Kensington Oval. He made the announcement as he welcomed news that JetBlue will be making a weekly flight from Boston to Barbados beginning November 7. In other news, the family of Tyrone de Costa Yard is trying to come to grips with his sudden death. The 68-year-old yard collapsed while in Mahill Street, the city, on Saturday night. His wife of 27 years, Issa Yard, who had the heart-wrenching task of identifying his body, described her husband as a family man who loved a good joke. Two Barbadians are in custody assisting police with a drug bust seven nautical miles off Checkerhall, St. Lucie. The two were arrested after lawmen intercepted a Bajan registered fishing vessel with 66 pounds of cannabis on board. Meantime, two St. Michael men will face the magistrate at the Holton District E Court on drug charges today. They are 38 year old Antonio Ricardo Worrell of Bridge Gap Black Rock and 45 year old David Oscar Huggins of Pine. Be. The two were arrested after police responded to a report of suspicious activity in Roadview St. Peter, where they later seized 22 pounds of cannabis and 19.1 kilograms of cocaine offshore. Worrell and Huggins are jointly charged with possession, possession with intent to supply, trafficking of cocaine and cannabis. Meantime, a 37-year-old St. Thomas woman is scheduled to appear in the District A Magistrates Court today on drug charges. She is Lysandra Paulette Jilks of Grandview, who was arrested after she went to a freight business to clear a freezer. A search by custom officials found 18.4 pounds of cannabis hidden in the door of the freezer. Jilks is to answer charges of possession, possession with intent to supply, and trafficking of cannabis. Also expected to appear in the Oystein's Magistrate Scotch today is 55-year-old Nzinga Onifka of Caneville Crescent Christ Church. This after customs officers at the airport searched and discovered 41 pounds of cannabis concealed in an imported stove and a dryer. Onifka, who will answer to charges of possession, possession with intent to supply, trafficking and importation. The numbers for the annual scenic ride and Picnic for the elderly in the St. Michael East constituency have doubled over the years, so says Parliamentary Representative Chris Sinclair, who took his constituents to a ride from Black Rock to Silver Sands for a day of fun and frolic for the fifth year running. It's growing. Um, when we first started, we had three buses, twelve, and uh, normally we try to target four hundred. This year, again, again, almost double. Um, we get um, uh, others who come in from some of the neighboring constituencies as well, okay. um, who would normally come and support our activities uh, throughout. In sports, the West Indies crushed England by five wickets at the Kensington Oval yesterday, led by a superb half-century from Darren Bravo to tie the three-match test series one all. Bravo's knock of 82, which contained seven fours and three huge sixes, rescued the Windies from a precarious position of 84-4. 
Together with Jumin Blackwood, who finished unbeaten on 47, the pair added 108 for the fifth wicket before Bravo lost his wicket with four runs needed for victory. Meantime, the Barbados 4x1 meters relay team smashed the national record not once but twice at the IAAF in the Bahamas. The new record, 38.70 seconds. Take a look. In one, the Bahamas is in two, Cuba three, then in Great Britain, Barbados, Italy, Dominican Republic, and Antigua Barbuda. And they build the track very quickly. Let's see who gets the baton first. Great Britain. And Great Britain is uh, moving and looking very, very good. Third leg. Second leg, sorry. Here they go around the bend in the middle of the track. It looks like Barbados. Barbados and Great Britain. Barbados and Great Britain making a run here for it. Barbados and Great Britain. Great Britain and Barbados and Great Britain will win the beef. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. Go ahead. That, that's, that's how you called it. Uh, I she, called she, it. She, she did say go ahead, Great Britain, now. Barbados, and Cuba. But this is why I'm excited, because Great Britain and Northern Ireland are living by the skin of their teeth. They didn't qualify automatically for the A final. That was disappointing. They had to be in the top to win that to give themselves a little chance, Ricardo. If somebody now messes up in the A final later, if Jamaica don't finish, if America don't finish, they will get promoted and they will be in the top eight automatically qualify for Rio next year. They have given themselves a, a chance. chance. And that's exactly what you said before this one. Here is the final exchange. And you called it, you called it. And everybody bunched up there. Barbados gets it first, but again, right there, getting it uh, is going to be by uh, Great Britain right there and uh, making a good run, a fantastic finish here for Great Britain to get in. And congratulations, winning the B division, the B flight. There's regional and international news after this short break. A test of character, a test of focus, a test of will. A test of resilience. A test of courage. Barbados, the test is on. West Indies, England, May 1st at the Mecca. Tickets, 30, 40, 50, and $60. It's on. Are you Barbados is on. Happenings, Jamaica's opposition spokesman on national security is calling on the country's police officers to exercise restraint. The call comes on the heels of a suspected murder suicide that led to the deaths of two constables in Ocho Rios, St. Anne, yesterday. Expressing shock at the incident, Derek Smith stressed that possessing a firearm is a big responsibility and also raises questions on whether the force had sufficient safeguards in place to identify members under stress and those who are high risk. On the international scene, the Baltimore curfew, which was imposed after riots broke out over the death of Freddie Gray, has been lifted. National Guard troops pulled out of the city yesterday. Six police officers are facing criminal charges over Gray's death, which has been ruled a homicide. They have denied any wrongdoing. And that's our morning updates, but we'll be back again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbidastoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune into Channel 101, that's online TV, and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Have a wonderful day.
This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here.